Okay, today we're gonna to look at another integral on the board here. This one's from the UNSW integration B 2021. This is from round two, problem three. We have the integral from negative pi to pi of the floor function of sine of sine 2x dx. Clearly, I think the most important thing for us to deal with with this integral is gonna be our floor function here. Let's see just how this works. So I have over here the definition. The floor of x is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So it's kind of a function that always helps us round down. And you have some examples over here. So if we have the floor of 4.7, it'll round us down to four. If we have the floor of four, it'll just stay at four because we're not. Then we notice the floor of 4.99 is still rounding down to four. Even though it's really close to five, it still rounds down to four. And then just one other thing to notice, if we have like a negative number, this floor of minus 1.3, it's the answer is not negative one, it goes down to negative two. Okay, so getting back to the integral here, what I wanna do is we really wanna focus, I really wanna look at the graph to get a good feel for this and kind of break this up into pieces. So let's get started on that. Okay, so as our starting point, what I wanna do is just look at the basic sine curve. So we're just looking at sine of x, so not anything. So at this point, we're not worried about the floor function or this input, we're just gonna look at our sine curve. So we have this basic shape that goes on forever noticing it hits zeros at zero, pi, two pi, because those are where the zeros are of sine. And then we have this maximum value here at one and this minimum value at negative one. And then with what we know about the floor function, what I wanna do next is let's just look at what happens, what is our graph of the floor of sine x gonna look like? Now, when we take the floor, this is actually gonna just kind of round us down to the greatest integer less than or equal to our sine of x. So let's kind of just look at this in different sections. So like between zero and pi, okay, this graph this whole time is basically between zero and one. So for all these values between zero and one, the floor is gonna take us down and all these values are actually gonna be zero because it takes us down to the next, it's gonna essentially round us down to zero, except for at one point, right here at, when, at this is gonna be pi over two, at pi over two, sine of x is one. And so the floor actually right there, we're gonna have a single point at one. Just kind of trying to make so you can see it in red. But outside of that single point, this whole thing here is gonna be rounding down to one. So I'm just writing that so you can see that. But then in this region between pi and two pi, all the values are negative between zero and minus one. So the floor of all that's gonna round us down to minus one. So we're gonna essentially have this line right here at minus one kind of going right like that all the way through. Even at, even at this point where it is minus one, the floor will just take us to minus one. So we'll essentially have this red line right here. And we'll have the exact same, because the sine curve is just repeating, this piece here is gonna look exactly the same as this. And then everything, if we were to continue over here, all this is gonna be at zero like this. So for our graph of the floor of sine x, we just have kind of this alternating up down staircase. We only have two values. Well, technically we have a third value, but in the case of the integral, a point isn't going to matter. So for our, for our purposes in this integral, we're just going to consider these two values of our floor of sine x. Now this helps us a little. This is kind of like what we have, but we have to notice this. Our function is more complicated. We have this input of sine of 2x. So let's look at sine of 2x for a moment. Okay, so now here at the bottom, I have our graph of sine 2x. And I'm only looking at it for minus pi to pi because that's our bounds on our integral. So that's really what we want to focus on. And so you notice it's really just a sine curve, but it's kind of squashed down a little bit. You get a, the increased frequency, but still going from one to minus one. And the thing I want to notice in this graph, okay, is clearly everything here from minus pi to minus pi over two is positive. From zero to pi over two, this region's positive, this region's negative, this region's negative. So then all we have to do to put this all together is kind of picture this we're taking what we have here, sine 2x, this is actually our input into the sine function. From here, now that we have some feel for the floor of sine x and we have our input, sine 2x, let's try to put this all together and get back to our integral. So I think what we can do to get a good feel for this, let's look at one of, I think a good point to look at is pi over four. So sine of 2x at pi over four, so we're saying sine of two times pi over four is going to be just sine of pi over two. And so that's why this, so this point right here is one. So if we just look at this graph on, if we look at the point at pi over four, 
the value of sine of 2x at pi over 4 is going to be 1. But then we're saying we're inputting that into our, our sine function here. So what we really want to look at is we want to look at the floor of sine of 1. Now sine of 1, um, we could pull out a calculator, but pi over 2 is 1.57. So sine of 1 is going to be, I don't know, let's say 0 0.7 or something, 0 0.8, somewhere in there. But it doesn't matter because we have the floor function. So whatever it is exactly, we know that this is going to take it down to 0. So what that tells us about this positive region, we, we chose pi over 4, and that's the greatest value. But for any of these values, if we input it, you know, we get a lesser value of sine. If we looked at the floor of sine of 0.5, let's say, that's going to be 0 as well. So what's happening is... In these regions, everything is just going to zero. And this one's gonna be the exact same thing. Everything here is gonna be zero. And so because these regions are zero, we essentially don't have to consider the integral because it's gonna be zeroed out in this region between minus pi to minus pi over two and zero to pi over two. There's nothing to do there. Those will all be zero. Next, we can look at another point like three pi over four. At three pi over four, sine of two x is gonna be minus one. So if at this point, sine of 2x is going to be minus 1. We want to look at that as the input of our sine function. So we want to look at is we want to look at the floor of sine of negative 1. And again, it's very similar to sine of minus 1. You know, with a calculator, we could see maybe it's minus 0.7 or 0.8, but it doesn't matter because the floor is taking everything down to the next lowest integer, so it's taking us down to minus 1. And so that's going to be true of all these points around that. They're all going to be taken down to negative one. So everything in this region is going to be at negative one. So to find the value of our integral, we're just going to calculate the value of these two, the area of these two rectangles, knowing that we know that the height is minus one, and we know that this, this length right here is going to be pi over two, and this is pi over two as well, but this is going from pi over two to pi. So these two rectangles are going to have the same area. I have this one's going to be minus one times pi over two. I mean, the area is going to be pi over two, but it's negative because it's underneath the x-axis. And then again, this one as well will be the same exact thing, minus pi over two. So for our solution, we're going to have our area as minus pi. That's it. I thought it was a pretty interesting problem today. So that was UNSW 2021. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.